Today my friends, we're making the best gin and tonic that we can possibly make. Because yes, this simple two ingredients cocktail can be a thing of beauty. One of my favorite ways to elevate this cocktail is to make a homemade tonic syrup. But be careful, following the wrong recipe may be dangerous. But no, mine is not. And yes, it is amazing. So if you guys are ready, let's do it right now. Okay, confession time. A few weeks ago, here on YouTube, I uploaded a video on how to make a homemade tonic syrup. And I deleted it because I forgot to mention something quite important actually. The main flavor and the main ingredient in tonic water or tonic syrup, whether it is a commercial one or a homemade one, is quinine. And there's a the thing with quinine, it can be harmful. When you ingest too much, it can cause a disease called the chinchonism or kinchonism. I don't know. It is spelled C I N C H I S C I N C H O N I S M. Chinchonism. It can cause vomiting, dizziness, can get you blind. So it's really bad. Uh, the recipe that I shared actually is a recipe that I've been making for 10 years and I knew about the risk of ingesting too much quinine. And I really felt that my recipe was totally safe because I've been making it for 10 years and nothing bad ever happened to me. But then I realized that sharing that on the wide and vast internet can be a bad idea. Like if ever someone just put too much quinine or a little more than I do because you want something more bitter or the quinine that he uses just has more quinine in the bark, can be harmful. So I deleted the video and I worked on a recipe that could have that same bitterness and hearty notes and taste that we all love about tonic water without the risk and the side effect of the quinine. And I came to the conclusion after several tests that a mix of gentian and angelica root can achieve pretty much the same taste that quinine does without all the side effects and risk of using quinine. So I think it is pretty dope. It is safe, homemade tonic syrup using quinine and gentian. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So here's what you're gonna need. Five grams of gentian and five grams of angelica roots. 15 grams of lime zest with as little pit as possible. 10 grams of lemongrass, 1.5 grams of green cracked cardamom pods, one small bay leaves, 2.5 grams of pu'er tea, 380 grams of sugar, and 12 grams of citric acid. Then you will place all your ingredients into a glass jar and pour over 475 grams of filtered water. Stir a little bit, close the lid, and let that brew in the fridge for 24 hours. Once you're done, you're gonna filter it through a nut milk bag. I'm gonna link the one that I use in the description down below because I love them. And this is it guys, this is how you make my homemade tonic syrup. And if you guys are wondering why I use the cold infusion method here instead of heating the syrup to develop the flavors, there's a really simple answer to that. When I use fresh ingredients like lime zest that are really temperature sensitive that will not taste as fresh and crisp when heated, I always go for the cold infusion method. So now, the flavor of the uh, syrup. There's one thing I like to mention when I give this recipe. It's kind of my base. It is the one size fits all. It goes really well with any kind of London dry gin, but what's really cool with homemade tonic syrup is you can customize them according to your favorite gin. For example, if your go-to gin is Tanqueray number no. 10, you can easily add some grapefruit zest and chamomile flowers into the infusion. It will be lovely. Then if Hendrix is your go-to, add a combo of black, white, and Szechuan peppercorn into the infusion you will thank me later, I guarantee. Now I'm using Sip Smith. It is a very simple and classic London dry gin, so it will just be perfect with that recipe. So we will start right away with two ounces of gin into a Collins glass filled up with ice. Two 
To that, we will add one ounce of our homemade tonic syrup. And we're gonna to top it up with about three ounces of soda water. For the garnish, we're simply gonna add two wine wheels. Just like that, and this is it, guys. This is how I make my premium gin and tonic. So now, let's give it a try. Hmm, <laughs> that really works, guys. I'm telling you, if you don't tell your friends there's no quinine in there, there's no way they're gonna find out. It tastes like an amazing gin and tonic. There's beautiful bitterness and hearty tones. It is fresh and crisp because of the lime zest and the citric acid. Beautiful complexity with the spices. The puher tea adds just a little bit of tannins that I love to add in my tonic syrups. That kind of my personal addition to tonic syrups. I really love to do that. I think it is really, really good. Now I went pretty easy and smooth on the garnishes, but that's a part where you can go crazy. If you use a citrusy and piney gin, adds a little bit of rosemary and a grapefruit wedge. It looks awesome. It smells really nice. Just go well, go according to your gin, according to the botanicals and spices that you put into your syrup if you do something different. Just have fun, make yourself delicious and safe gin and tonic at home and have fun. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the like and the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new cocktail video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers. I really like it. I think I like it even better than the quinine. That was a good idea. <laughs>